Buongiorno a tutti. Well, our mother actually, besides speaking German, was also fluent in French and Italian. So on this journey, we are actually going to go to the Italian speaking part, which is uh, on the south side of the Alps and uh, uh, also Italian speaking, obviously, but also it is a much milder climate. So we're going to go to Ascona, which is on uh, Lago Maggiore, and uh, it's quite a pleasant place to go. As you can see, palm trees. Karen is smiling now. It's a lot warmer place to go. And you can see the, uh, these are now the remnants, I guess, of the Alps or the mountains much lower. But uh, the buildings are quite colorful. And uh, they have a lot of outdoor eating areas. So it's a great place to hang out. And uh, so we also walked around town a little bit and checked things out. All alleyways are quite narrow. I guess uh, land was at its premium. Nice, quiet little patio there. Anyway, we came across this place that not only made metal sculptures, and I was selling them, and uh, quite beautiful. And uh, this looks like it's uh, sun is peeking over the horizon, and this is the hotel we're staying in. It was uh, slightly outside of town, but it was a nice garden, and the view from the terrace was beautiful. This is looking southwest, I guess, towards Italy, and this is looking east. East. A view of the town. And I noticed there was quite a few cranes, so I guess uh, the economy was going good and all is well. But this was actually made this trip in 2015, and it was great. Well, as you know us by now, we were not. Uh, sitting around for too long so we decided it's time to go for a hike so we actually did a whole day tra trek up the Bacheska Valley and uh, it's as you can see the relatively poor for uh, farming I think that but mostly goats and some cows but uh, I think that area now relies a lot on uh, tourism. Well, the, the trail that we took, well, that was the only trail that was out and walking up the road. It uh, had its challenging parts, and we came across this little shelter that I guess uh, some of the goat herders uh, would hunker down on a stormy day. See that a little bench in there and uh, it's quite intriguing. And this was uh, a bit of a bigger shelter for the animals. I guess keep them away from the wolves even though in Switzerland didn't have many wolves. Well, it's time for a break and just kind of listen to the birds. Further up the trail, uh, no big bridges there, just enough to uh, keep hiking. More challenging parts, but one thing, we we're close to nature. Well, Karen couldn't resist. 
that do some stretch exercising. And also we came across this was uh, actually you could buy uh, chestnuts and uh, you set these bags out there and you put a little money down and uh, you keep going. So you see this whole village uh, has also slate roofs. Well, finally something to eat. So we there was a restaurant on the side of the road and uh, we got a cheese platter and holy smokes never seen so much cheese in my life. It was just fantastic. Wish we could buy that cheese nowadays for that price. Well, full belly. I'm going to carry on. Keep walking up the trail. Well, now we're at the end of the valley. And there's this uh, little uh, village called Sononio. And... Uh, it, uh, I guess you can tell that this is a very rocky region and all the buildings are made out of stone because that was building material available. But the, uh, some amazing structure. And, uh, people made a big effort to, uh, put some color into it and a lot of flowers, but also the, didn't waste much money on railings. Of course, what's important in every town is uh, a church. And uh, that's the main church there. I guess dedicated to Mary. Well, we also visited the town of Locarno. And uh, as you can see, similar bright colored buildings as we see in Ascona and uh, narrow streets speed limit 30 that makes sense kind of narrow and uh, beautiful lush looking garden even Karen looks much brighter there look at that Now, Locarno is also famous besides being a tourist town. There is a, a Madonna del Sasso, which I guess at one time was a monastery, but it's uh, made Locarno quite famous. And there's a, a little uh, rail car that goes up there and uh, has some uh, this beautiful church with um, a lot of paintings. Look at that rich blue and uh, amazing. Well, we jumped across the Alps. Well, we took the car and we're now uh, back on the north side. We're in Brienz. And uh, Brienz is on, uh, on the lake and uh, it's, I think, Part of Canton Burn. Well, Karen couldn't resist to have a look out the window there early in the morning just to uh, enjoy the view. Uh, you see, that's looking east, and the sun is just peeking over the horizon. Looking west across uh, Brenzasse. It's actually looking towards Interlaken. Yeah, the sun is moving quickly. And then uh, just to west of us was his church. It was built on a bit of a hill. And uh, on the water, it's a nice, beautiful promenade where you can stroll along. They even have lounge chairs so you can relax. Yeah, very pleasant. Especially if we were actually there, I think it was in October, so it was past the peak tourist season. Now the other thing they had there was this little game you could play. And uh, 
what I found amazing, they even supply chairs. Well, there's the experts trying to figure it out. As we strolled along the promenade, we uh, were not all alone because there was wood carvings, sculptures here and there. And uh, the reason why there's so many wood carvings there, because Brienz literally is the carving capital of Switzerland. I don't know how many actually are making a living in wood carving, but there's even a you can sign up and have a two-year course on wood carving. So it's uh, very famous and they do do beautiful work. And the homes are uh, well-maintained. A lot of them are a lot of wood in them. Cobblestones, lots of flowers. I guess one thing with cobblestones, uh, you build them once and uh, then you, you're done for the next 200 years. No repainting, no patching up or anything. But look at that terrarium. Isn't that just awesome? No room for big trucks. Just uh, get your little car in there and all is well. Well, the other thing that we found in Prince, he won't be starving. Danny uh, ordered a hamburger, and, uh, well, he did get a hamburger. Well, and I wasn't holding back. I figured, well, he can have a hamburger. I can have a nice treat. A look at that dessert. Well, I think I kind of overdid it. That's kind of how I felt afterwards. Oops, ate too much, but sure was sweet. What was also in the area, well, there was a 10-minute drive from Prince was Ballenberg, and Ballenberg is sort of a museum f uh, for houses and uh, lifestyle of historical buildings in Switzerland. So they, as you probably noticed, different regions of Switzerland have different uh, styles of construction and uh, architecture. And so uh, whenever it was a house that was about to be demolished, they uh, moved it into this open door museum. Uh, this was interesting. The, uh, this is actually where they're making the, uh, what we call cedar shingles, but I think they use fir, because there's no cedars in Switzerland. And what intrigued me on this house, it has an espalier on the outside of the house, and this that's the house that we grew up in, they had one uh, like that. And this is kind of a monster of a construction. Well, this is actually to make cider, to put the apples in, crush them, and uh, collected the juice. Now, it must have been one heck of a long, strong farmers putting those wedges in there. But uh, obviously, uh, it seemed to do the trick. Now, this kind of made me laugh because... Uh, I was about three, four years old. We uh, we didn't have uh, hot water in the house, so then we ended up having to. Uh, we, have, we had a heating, water heating uh, outfit like that, and we ended up uh, heating the water. And they had one of those metal tubs, and that was our bathtub. And I uh, remember as a kid, my, uh, we would have our bath out there because it was in a other building next to the house. And then our dad would carry us into the house rather quickly because we just had a, a towel and that was it. Of course, uh, we didn't have a bath every day. So needless to say, uh, if you see me as a kid with the tan, wasn't all tan. But guess what? We're still alive and we survived. Well, it's time to uh, just take a break and figure out where to go next. Actually, uh, there's several acres there, and uh, it's quite amazing. And, uh, one of the old buildings that was uh, what appears to be the kids' bedroom, and uh, that's the master bedroom. And uh, 
no Wi-Fi. And a little pot there, in case you got to use the potty during the night. <laughs> well, the meaning to potty, eh? This is a old, old sawmill, and uh, these are all the gears, the drives to the belt, and that's the, the blade that cut the logs. Kind of remind me of those old, old uh, horror movies. And uh, this is a, I don't know whether, that, I guess it was a, barn for storing hay but it had this and it's used as a meeting place now it looks like for schools for classes but that was amazed me was all that span and uh, if you want to sit down and kind of figure out you see how to everything was cantilevered over to carry the overhang of that roof and so it was a uh, Actually, considering it's probably three, four hundred years old, and uh, I think at that time they had what they call engineers going around. But the uh, it's a lot of thinking went into that calculating out what how, what's going to need it to carry that over hangover or overhang. Sorry, might have been a hangover by the time you're done. So you can see all the different building styles and building materials and I, I guess that chimney was a bit of an add-on there and it looks kind of wild but also in some areas where they had more wood available they used a lot of wood and uh, I also had this fellow doing a demonstration on how to make cheese and uh, that's a that's a lot of milk there but uh, I guess he wasn't uh, fooling around you making cheese you're making cheese and this is the uh, shelving where they store the cheese and also an old-fashioned scale where they weigh the cheese and this kind of blew me away like when a fire truck pulls up and says what the heck I got like it got like see it looked like wooden roof and the guys is uh Got this fire going in there. But anyway, looks like it's been going for a couple hundred years. And it looks like uh, some kitchen area. And this is a style of houses that are more in the northeast of Switzerland, in Gaubinden, where you can see there's mostly uh, stone and masonry, and the walls are generally quite deep and uh, sturdy. And of course, you Gotta have a church and a chapel, and uh, there was quite an ornate altar. And I think Karen was asking for forgiveness because she ate my cookies, but I have given her, forgiven her. While well, we're done, we're praying. We keep moving on. See what else is there to see. Well, this shows you it's. Why it's not good to have goats as a pet. These things are destroying the trees. I'm surprised I didn't get them away. I also had a old uh, merry-go-round. I wouldn't know how old it is, but it was quite ornate. And this is uh, a farmhouse. It looks more like an, a, an estate farmhouse in the French part of Switzerland. And I was looking at the kitchen, and I was looking at that, thinking to myself, well, I think there's going to be a lot of soup and not many steaks in that kitchen. Now, <clears throat> this uh, kind of intrigued me. Oh, this is very uh, nice to have uh, to wash the dishes out by the window. And I looked on the other side. I says, well, that's even better. You can just uh, flush it out, and out the window she goes. Well, they had also a museum with all kinds of displays, etc. But uh, I just wanted to show you a picture of all the different cowbells that they are available. And nearby there was uh, a zoo, and uh, we uh, went to see the animals there. And the girls are uh, like that, fun feeding them. 
Oh, young and old, they're all uh, having a good time all together. And uh, there is Dania Morella. And uh, I just wanted to express our gratitude to them because they're been taking us to the French part of Switzerland and uh, Italian part of Switzerland and showed us around their area. So one big thank you. It was fun. And uh, that's the end of this uh, session. And uh, we're going to go to central Switzerland with the next trip. And... Uh, so, look in your mailbox. So long.